This is a general overview of the X20 controller, um, optional for the Borgo 6000 series air seater. First off, we want to check and make sure that all harnesses and other components are connected properly on the air seater and across the tillage implement and in the tractor cab. Refer to the air seater and seed rate controller operator's manual for detailed layouts if required. In the tractor cab, the harness from the seed rate control interface should be connected to the COM3 port on the back of the console. Now turn on the power switch located on the back of the console. Lower right corner, spring loaded switch, hold it for about three seconds. The X20 controller runs on Windows XP operating system and it takes the typical amount of time for a, a Windows computer to start up, so be patient. You see here it starts up as a normal Windows XP desktop. Now when you have the controller uh, fresh out of the box, what you're going to see is this grid of possible controller softwares. Um, what we're interested in here is the seed rate controller to control our Borgo air seeder. So when you touch on that, uh, icon on the grid, it activates it to start up the controller software and then we hit start to continue the loading process. So we'll go through the main display. Uh, when the program is loaded, the main display screen appears. Selecting different areas of the touch screen will result in changes to the display access to other windows as well as controlling various other functions of the air seeder. Now going through this display here, um, product type. Um, basically on each section of the screen we have a display for each compartment of the air seeder. On the top here is the product type. So in this case on tank 1, product type is 1251.00 fertilizer. Uh, so that lists which product is in that compartment as you have the monitor configured. Now product remaining is this number here, in this case 8,702 pounds. So what the, mo the controller does is um, calculates down based on the current rate that it was putting out and the acres you're covering across to give you an estimate of the product remaining in the tank. When we refill the air seeder, that we have to tell the controller when we did that so that that number is actually accurate and useful. The product level will show as a color bar um, graduating down as the product level goes down. That is also a calculated value and it's based on the rate being output. The tank number, tank number in this case, tank one, always left to right, lowest to highest, and that also always correlates to the front compartment of an air seater as being tank one and the, the next one back is tank two and so on. This can also be called a bin one if you would rather use that terminology. Application rate units directly under that. In this case, we have it set at pounds per acre, which is quite common in North America. Tank switches. Touching the display here below this tank one is just like hitting the tank switch on the switch box. So that activates the clutch for tank one as an individual tank clutch. 
the application rate display, the actual rate that it's putting out here is in this gray box, the black lettering. This is the target rate. So if that number and your target rate are different, it is true that the actual rate is not meeting the target rate. Increase rate by preset increment. The up arrow is designed to increase the rate in a manual form. So bump it up as a preset value. Um, the increment can be set uh, to any amount of increase or decrease that you desire for each tank individually. Preset rate one is this button here as shown as 160 in this case. Preset rate one is a default rate. So that is a user defined default. Uh, when you are using that rate, it is essentially considered to be normal or the default rate that you are shooting for, for the majority of the field. Preset rate two is a user defined secondary rate. So at any point in time, you can hit that button and it'll automatically uh, change the controller setting on the transmission to 80 pounds per acre versus 160. Decrease rate by preset increment, just the same as increase, but in the same amount of an increment in the decrease direction. So increase 10 pounds, decrease 10 pounds in this case. The master switch is directly below that and red being master switch is off. You touch on it, green meaning master switch is on. This master switch can also be triggered in many different ways. Uh, external switch box has a switch. The, there can be an automatic auto clutch switch on the tillage unit or using the guidance program in conjunction with the seed rate controller, it can be done automatically via GPS tracking. Ground speed display is up here. What that will do is, is show you the ground speed from whichever source you've selected in the options menu. And we'll go through that a little bit later. Um, selecting this icon on the display actually brings up some other menus for quick access. Um, if for ever any reason you have a failure in the ground speed sensing device that you've selected, you can manually override with this manual speed feature to essentially trick the monitor to thinking it's, it's moving at the same speed as it was before and you can continue seeding even with that failure of a, a speed source. That speed can be increased or decreased by half a mile per hour, or you can enter a specific speed if you have a desired number that you'd like to hit. So in this case, you could seed perfectly normal at 5.2, if you were traveling 5.2, the monitor would essentially know no difference. The applied area display directly below this is showing an acre counter. So in this case, 30.64 acres was accumulated on tank one. So if you notice when you touch this, it brings up some alternate menus, but it also toggles between these place cards which correlate to individual tank acre counters. So this card switched to the colors that match tank two. Touch it again, it matches the color for tank three. Touch it again, it matches the color for tank four. And if you do it again, we actually get to tank five. On the right, the menus that it brings up bring in many more area counting features. Um, total one is typically used as a general field area acre counter. 
total two is typically used as an annual field acre counter. So what most guys would do would be reset this total one at the start of every field and that basically counts acres that the master clutch is on no matter what each individual tank clutch is doing. The acre counter over here, this number may be different than total one depending on which tank you are looking at and whether that tank was on the entire time that the master clutch was on. The applied product indicator. Just like the acre counter, there is a amount of product calculator that follows every tank individually. So again, if you touch it, toggles between one, two, three, four, five, back to one again. So you can keep track of the amount of pounds of product of each product in each tank individually with that feature. Below that is the fan indicator. This symbol here is symbolizing a fan. When fans, one or two fans is an option, are running under normal parameters, this icon will be green. The display of fan speed for fan one, as shown in this small bubble here, will be so many RPM. Now, if you touch on the bubble, it's gonna bring up your easy access to fan alarm parameters. If you touch it again, if you had the air pressure sensor activated, it switches to a PSI reading to show you air pressure. That is an option and it can be purchased from your Borgo dealer. In this case, I have two fans showing, so one and two will show individual RPMs for each of the two fans. If you have two fans enabled, both of them have to be within their respective high and low RPM parameters for that to be showing green and green being normal. The fan alarm settings for high and low RPM speed can be done here on this side window. So a high RPM for fan one, set them individually, can be just entered if you touch the calculator button. For an example, 5,000 RPM and the same for low RPM. Now to set fan two, you just switch the bubble over to fan two and then you have a new set of parameters to set for fan two. Again, the high and low pressure is a optional air pressure sensor. If you did not purchase that, these um, menus are really of no use to you. Below that, we have the toggle button that switches between displaying tanks one through four and tanks five. This is only there if you have a four compartment air seater, either 6450, 6550, or 6700, and an H3 or liquid system as an additional tank five. If you do not have that configuration, that button just will not be there. The data side window access. If you hit the data button, it brings up very valuable information over on the right hand side for reference. Um, items such as ground speed, area per hour, seating time, which keeps track of clutched in time, what the manual speed is set at, just for your reference, manual or machine width, wheel factor, the high and low RPM levels of the fans, and then also the rates for each tank, capacities of each tank, calibration factors of each tank, what type of auger you have configured for each tank, actuator position, and metering auger RPM. It also tells you whether a switch box is connected or not. Um, could be a useful tool to tell if you have everything connected properly. This display under here is the blockage indicator display. 
So if you have clean flow going through, there's going to be green bars in here that match up with your blockage sensors. If you have a blocked sensor, it's going to be red bars. To get the main menu side window up, touch the main menu button and that brings up many more buttons on the side. A common thing that uh, a Borgo service technician might ask you on a, a support phone call would be to tell him what software version you are running. To access that, if you touch anywhere on the Borgo logo in the upper right corner, it actually lists here Borgo Seed Rate Controller version 2.3.7.1 released June 2010. Um, that's always a valuable piece of information so we know what version you are running to track any glitches that you might be reporting. The register button. Um, this would be used if you are adding a software to an existing X20 controller. Um, if everything is delivered from the factory, you should end up with a message saying already registered. What the registering activation does is releases the ability to change parameters in the software. If it was not registered, you would actually be unable to set the machine properly. If you hit the button and it asks for a code, you will have to actually contact a Borgo dealer and they will get a hold of the Borgo service department to get the appropriate code. Enable lockout. What that feature can be used for is to lock out very important parameters that can directly affect the machine operation and that can be valuable with a multi-operator operation um, where there maybe should not be access to every operator using the machine. Um, key is to remember or write down the password that you set up in that situation so that you do not lock out the software um, requiring a full reprogramming of the software. The options window. Um, options button on the right hand side brings up the options tab where we set up many of the parameters that you see being shown on the screen here. That will be done from the factory if it's a factory built unit and it's to directly match the Borgo machine that you have purchased. These settings are, are quite important with the function of the machine and should only be accessed if absolutely necessary. Main help window access. Use the help button on the main menu. This brings up some important information um, quite often duplicated from the operator's manual but is easy access here, here if the operator's manual is in your shop or office. So you can scroll through the items in the help menu and it can quite often get you out of a bind if you uh, forget a certain function on the machine or how to access um, a certain parameter. Granular calibration. If you hit this calibrate button, it brings up the screen that you will use to calibrate the granular product. The tank 5, if you have an anhydrous or liquid system, will not be used to calibrate in this screen itself. This only covers the granular product. Selecting that icon brings up the menu and puts the monitor in the appropriate mode to capture the data required to do a proper calibration. On the left hand side, when you touch the tank clutch numbers, um, it's essentially like activating the clutch or not. So if there was ever a time where you didn't want to calibrate a tank, you touch it and it actually grays out the or deselects the clutch for that appropriate tank and it will not calibrate that tank. 
We will be going into calibrations in further detail later in the supplemental video. Blockage window access. If you have a blockage system and it is enabled in the options, which we'll show you later, the blockages button will appear. And if you hit that, when everything's normal, it should say no blockages detected. If you were to have a blockage sensor indicate that there is a blockage in the air kit, it will list a sensor number and you can actually have them named for quick access to the appropriate sensor. And if you had a blockage, when you hit that button, it would say which sensor or named sensor is detecting a blockage. The shutdown button will shut down the software. And in the Borgo software, we have this desktop button. What that does is it shuts down the software to the desktop level, just like a Windows computer.